Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to be talking about precipitation reactions. So we're going to define what we mean by a precipitate. We're going to look at this process of a precipitation chemical reaction. Uh, we're going to look at how a precipitate actually forms um, in terms of the physical steps and then introduce a technique that we use to describe this precipitation reaction is called a net ionic equation. So what is a precipitate? Well, you can see some visual examples here that you've seen ones um, in the past that have formed in front of your eyes. We're talking about an insoluble solid. And it's not just something that doesn't dissolve, but rather it's something that forms when we mix two soluble ionic compounds together. So we take solution A and we take solution B, we combine them together and bang, all of a sudden an insoluble solid gets formed. We have this cloudiness that we can notice. You know, this we've got the same compounds here in these two ones called lead iodide, a really beautifully distinctive yellow. Um, and then we've got some different kind of hydroxide precipitates, different colours that get made over here. Okay, that this idea of it, it's, it doesn't dissolve in water, but we started with solutions to begin with. Um, so that's kind of how we define a precipitate. So when we're looking at precipitation reactions, we're looking at this idea of what we, it's also kind of known as what's called a double replacement reaction. It's a chemical reaction where we've mixed these two ionic solutions, ionic compounds, and then the cations and anions are swapping partners or swapping places. They are originally paired up in certain ways and then they're swapping over. And then during that swapping over process, like you can see here, that a precipitate gets formed. Okay, so we've got two chemical reactions here that represented with the chemical equation. So we've got this one, we've got copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide combining together to make a copper hydroxide precipitate in a colourless sodium sulfate solution. So the sulfate and the hydroxide have swapped places. Or you could look at it and say that the copper and the sodium have swapped places. Either way, we've got two new combinations. Okay, and likewise over here we've got lead nitrate and potassium iodide. We've mixed together, we've formed a potassium, uh, a lead iodide um, precipitate in a colourless potassium nitrate solution. Okay, so our cations and anions are swapped places. Here's a general kind of chemical reaction to illustrate how this works. That's, it's like we can see that C and D have swapped places. Okay, that's how this works. And um, we've ended up with two new pairings. However, one of those is insoluble in water, and then the precipitate ends up forming. Okay, so we're going to go through how that works now. So we've got two solutions, we've mixed them together. In that mixed solution, that combined solution, we've got all four ions. So in, we're going to go through, this is using lead iodide as our example. So we've got lead, we've got nitrate, we've got potassium, and we've got iodide ions all combined together. Now what happens is that the lead and iodide ions strongly attract together. Okay, so they're from being separate in solution, they're able to overcome the fact that we've got water molecules in the way to actually pull close together, um, you know, and move the water aside. They're more strongly attracted to each other than they are to the water molecules that are surrounding them already. And what we do is that that then starts to form ionic bonds. We're starting to build that crystal. Okay, so we're starting to build that lattice of positive and negative ions in a 3D arrangement, connecting together, getting bigger and bigger. And so we get solid lead iodide forming as we this crystal grows larger and larger as more and more and more ions attract onto it, and then we can start to see it. Um, in this case, we see it as a yellow precipitate. It doesn't have to be yellow, like, like compounds don't have to be coloured. It can be a white precipitate for things, and this particular one happens to be yellow. Okay, but so as that crystal grows larger, as those chunks get bigger, we can start to see them. Um, and then, you know, if the crystals are large enough, that then they'll actually start to drop to the bottom of the container over time. If they're still really quite small, then they might actually be what we call suspended. Like that is that they're, just, they're not dense enough, they're not heavy enough to actually start to, you know, be, to be sinking to the bottom. They'll just stay there. But they will be cloudy and noticeable. The thing to remember here also is that the potassium and nitrate ions are still there, but they remain in the solution. That is, they're aqueous. So they're still dissolved in water. They haven't disappeared. They are in the container, but they're not in the precipitate. Okay, so two ions stick joined together to make the precipitate. The other two ions are left behind as is. And so what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to write a meaningful chemical equation to describe this process. But I'm going to introduce you to a, a particular type of equation that we tend to use, okay, that keeps things just that little bit quicker and simpler. So the kind of equation that you're used to writing is 
technically known as a neutral species equation. Okay, we write complete formulae for all the substances that are present in that mixture. Okay, so we'd write the lead nitrate formula, potassium iodide formula, the lead nitrate, and uh, lead iodide and potassium nitrate formulas as our products. Okay, but one thing that what we were looking at is this idea that these ions are they're not all stuck together as, as combined compounds, that the ions are actually already separated in solution. So we have a lead ion, a nitrate ion, a potassium ion, and an iodine ion, all actually dissociated from each other already. And then the lead and the iodide are the ones that are sticking together to make the precipitate. The potassium and the nitrate are remaining behind unchanged. They haven't reacted together at the start. They haven't been in a different form at the other end. They, we say they are spectator ions. So it will be simpler for us if we could actually just kind of take the nitrate and the potassium ions out of the equation to reflect the fact that they're not changing. And we could just write an equation with what's left over. We call this the net ionic equation. So the net ions, the most important ones that are involved, are only the only ones being shown because they're the ones that are changing. Okay, any spectator ions are ignored, they are left out of the equation because they're not participating in the reaction. Okay, we know that they're still there. Okay, we're not assuming that they vanished, but the idea is that we're leaving them out for simplicity. Okay, so we have a lead ion and two iodine ions joining together to make lead iodide as a solid. Okay, that our state descriptors AQ and S help to tell the, the story of what's happened here. That they were dissolved and now they're not. And so we've ignored those spectator ions. So we define what we mean by a precipitate, this insoluble solid that forms when we mix two solutions. We talk about this as a chemical reaction, a type of chemical change, um, this formation of a precipitate. We went through the steps that are involved in going from two solutions that mix to having a precipitate there in the container. And then introduced net ionic equations as a handy tool that we can use to describe this process a little bit more simply, quickly and easily. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.